Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different from crystals. We're going to look at what we call amorphous solids, which are not crystalline. So that means they don't form themselves into crystals. Well, one exception, of course, we have what we call uh, quartz glass. Uh, here's a two-dimensional representation of quartz glass. And yes, since it's made out of pure silicon dioxide, which is tetrahedral in shape, it forms very nice structures just like um, uh, carbon does in the diamond structure. So you can see from a two-dimensional aspect, if you think of the purple dots as being the silicon atoms and the black dots as being the oxygen atoms, you can see how it forms these nice hexagonal shapes uh, in the, in the two-dimensional form. And they're all exactly the same, so that's why it's a crystal structure. Now when you go to something where you mix other substances with the silicon dioxide in the case of Pyrex. Now Pyrex of course is something that we use uh, for cooking, um, for, for plates and for cooking utensils. Uh, very strong, very resilient. Of course you don't want to drop it, it usually breaks. Also they use that in for example beakers and, and, and the like uh, for chemistry labs. Very very solid, very, very strong, very sturdy. Uh, but the difference there is since we mix other substances with it, such as uh, boron oxide or aluminum oxide, it gives it different properties, the ones that we want, but it causes it not to be as crystalline structured as before, so you see that there's variation in the shapes, especially when you go to something like soda lime glass, which is a basic constituent for windows and bottles. You can see that when you use different kinds of substances like sodium oxide and calcium oxide, you get something where the glass is not crystalline and over time with enough pressure uh, you can actually change the internal structure of the atoms. They will not permanently stay in the same shape. So over a long period of time glass can actually be reshapen simply by maybe by pushing on it, simply by its own weight. And it turns out very old glass, uh, very old windows can actually be thicker at the bottom than at the top because slowly the atoms morph. It's almost like a glacier that slowly moves over time. Glass, of course, moves, moves even slower than glaciers. But again, the reason why it does so is because it's not locked into a specific crystalline structure and it has the ability to move around due to the fact that it's been infused by other substances like boron oxide, aluminum oxide, and so forth. So anyway, that's the difference between a pure crystalline structure, which is made out of something that's 100% pure silicon dioxide, and then what we call amorphous solids, which are not crystalline structure, we have the ability to slowly move and change over time. We, we have, there's a lot of different kinds of glass around that has different combinations. We've, we've of course experienced, experimented with different kinds of combinations to see what different kind of properties you get. Uh, some glass is uh, very, it lets visible light through, but it will block out ultraviolet light. Others will have different kind of properties. But again, the whole idea is that when you have something that is unique in in uh, form so that it has 100% repetition of the same molecule you tend to get crystalline structures when you start mixing different substances like this together with uh, silicon dioxide then you see you end up with something that's not quite as crystalline and has kind of a semi-crystalline shape but it has what we call amorphous shape meaning that it can change and morph over time that's the difference